So it might surprise you to know that more and more of the wealthiest business owners in Canada are turning to this strategy. And they're doing it to protect their estates, but also to address the tax issues that we've talked about. And there's hundreds of millions of dollars that are going into these policies. Hi, I'm Liz Lamond. I'm in here with my colleague, George Roth. We're here to talk about corporate owned life insurance. If you'd like to see a previous uh, episode that we've done on corporate owned life insurance, please uh, hit go and look below and you can click on the button that's coming up for the episode. Uh, so this is this, this is another episode that we're doing on just a bit more information about corporate owned life insurance. Our first episode spoke a lot more about what it's all about. So go and catch that. Um, and today we're just going to go into a little bit more detail about the tool um, and what it can do in terms of changing your exit strategy for your corporation. Right on. Thanks, Liz. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> So corporate owned life insurance, often referred to as COLI, C-O-L-I, is, is more and more common and more and more Canadian businesses are learning about the benefits of having this uh, permanent life insurance. So, you know, in the, in the previous episodes, we talked about some of the problems that business owners want to get solved and how this tool is a great way to solve some of those problems. So those problems are about protecting shareholders you know, business continuity and providing an exit strategy. But something that people don't often think about, especially as business owners, permanent corporate owned life insurance can bolster your balance sheet and bolster your annual income. This is an asset that grows and provides a positive to your balance sheet and provides income to your corporation. So it becomes an extremely powerful tool because not only is it for the future, but it can also be used in the present. So to unlock this potential, business owners need to turn to someone and that someone just happens to be us. Yeah, that's a really good point, George. And I think um, it's not always well understood in general in terms of how it can be optimized, particularly for um, for business owners. And so it's really important that uh, whether you work with us or somebody else, that you make sure you have somebody who really understands how to implement this strategy uh, correctly and that they have, they're working with professionals who also have a really good understanding of how this works. So particularly with the bolstering of the balance sheet as an asset, it's important that you work with a tax professional who understands whole life insurance. And I've certainly found through my own experience that not all um, tax professionals actually do understand correctly how this works for a corporation. So it's really important that you work with the right people who understand to use it so that you actually get the best advantage out of using this tool in your business. And great points, Liz. So the information that we're presenting here actually was written by CPAs. So um, to have your accountant understand this is absolutely critical. The other thing is, uh, you know, we talk about permanent life insurance, but they're not all created equal. So it has to be the right kind of policy. Mm -hmm. It has to be participating, dividend paying, whole life insurance. That is the tool. That is the vehicle. Yeah, very important. And uh, it needs to be designed correctly. So make sure you work with somebody who can, can do that for you. Um, and so... Often people think about insurance in terms of, oh, this would only apply to my business if somebody passed away in the business. And so often term insurance is recommended for that. Mm -hmm. However, you know, there's so many more needs in a, in a business um, than just the um, death benefit that's going to get paid out should one of the business partners um, pass away. So not only do we have um, the, the protection level for exit strategies, but the really important part is the, um, the cash value that's growing inside the tool. And so um, it is something that stays within um, a tax advantaged uh, tool that you can use. And that's certainly very advantageous in the business environment as well, so that you can keep that um, the containment of your tax liability within your corporation. Yeah, huge, huge um, benefit to this tool is that it's a tax exempt life insurance policy. So there's no gener there's not generating annual taxable income. Uh, and especially with the passive income rules that were implemented uh, a few years ago, 2018, I believe, um, you know, where, where corporations are paying 50% tax on any passive income inside their corporation. Uh, so this impact is huge. 
Now, not to make it too complicated, um, you know, we talk about this MTAR, maximum tax actuarial reserve. Um, you as a client, you as a business owner would not have to worry about this. The insurance companies take care of this for us. So they ensure on our behalf and on your behalf that, it, that, we, that we stay on side, we stay within the limits set by CRA. Um, and, and you're never going to exceed those limits. Um, with it, with this tax exempt um, policy and 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 strategy. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, that you know just goes back to um, it needs to be a correctly designed tool and also working with the right professionals so that uh, it stays within that tax exempt status is is really important. And another point too is um, this is written inside the tax code. So mm -hmm. this is not an exception to the code like like registered plans are. Uh, this is actually part of the tax code. So um, that's also important to understand. <clears throat> that's that's actually a really great point because I've had uh, discussions with numerous um, clients who've been concerned because they've gone to their tax professional and they've been concerned about using this and wondering whether or not it's going to breach any uh, CRA rules. And so it's an important thing to actually be able to tell your tax professional that it is within the tax code. And uh, often, you know, we have, a, we have accountants that we work with who are willing to provide that information directly to your accountant so that they know exactly where in the tax code it can be used. So really important point um, because it's sometimes not well understood that it is part of, of the tax code. Yeah, very important. And, and speaking of accountants and CPAs, so... Uh... Often, very often, CPAs themselves don't actually understand the power of permanent participating whole life insurance. Um, so it might surprise you to know that more and more of the wealthiest business owners in Canada are turning to this strategy. And they're doing it to protect their estates, but also to address the tax issues that we've talked about. And there's hundreds of millions of dollars that are going into these policies. And there, there's a reason for that. It's the significant value that business owners can see and understand, and it becomes very tangible and you can see the benefits, the tax efficient, it's a tax efficient asset. It's not an expense. You know, so often people think of insurance in general and life insurance in particular as being an expense, but it's actually an asset that is gonna grow and benefit you now and into the future. And I think a really important part of that is often not well understood by um, either a tax professional or, you know, people in the general public is that it, you don't lose access to that liquidity. So that's a really important part of that properly designed um, policy with a participating whole life dividend paying policy is it the business owner is still able to access liquidity. There's a couple of different ways you can access liquidity out of that policy. Um, depending on what your business objectives are. And so that provides an opportunity to have a growing pool of capital for funding um, new equipment or business needs or whatever happens along the business cycle um, while also building up this layer of protection. So it's an asset that is sort of multitasking for your business, which is really, really important to understand. Great way to put it, multitasking in it, and it definitely is doing that. So we talk about the benefits to the corporation in the present and into the near term. And it's not just about planning for your estate, planning for you know, the worst case scenario of, of losing someone, um, which are all very important, but it's also extremely beneficial to the present. So this chart, I know there's a lot of information here, but really what we wanna, wanna point out is on the left-hand side, this is, the idea that insurance is an expense. And this is why people think that insurance is an expense. So if we use term insurance as our solution to the problem, um, you can see that it just becomes nothing of an expense and nothing more than an expense because there's no cash value associated with the term policy. But if we look over here on the, on the, on the permanent side of it, properly designed whole life policy, and this is just an example, so don't get too caught up with the numbers because these numbers are going to be specific to, to anyone's you know, particular situation. 
But in this instance, what we're doing is we're showing a $200,000 a year annual premium for 10 years. And the cash surrender value is gonna grow every single year. And the impact on the balance sheet is huge. So what we're doing is we're just looking at the cash value versus the premium and what that's gonna do to your balance sheet, you know, whether it's a liability or an asset. So within six years, you're breaking even. And then after that, it's an asset that continues to grow every single year. And even in year 11, when we're not putting any more money in, it's still growing as an asset. And then on the income statement sheet, what income are we generating? So this, this column is just showing the difference between the annual growth of the cash surrender value versus what we're putting in. So after in the fourth year, we're generating income. And then to the point where we're gonna generate $200,000 a year in perpetuity without even putting any more money in. So this is the power that you can see that's gonna affect your balance sheet and your income statement. I think one thing I just wanna to add to that is that you have access to the cash value during that time. So this is showing what's happening on the balance sheet, but that's, that's numbers, right? What's important is what, what can you actually access? So understanding that you're gonna have access to um, some of that capital and an increasing amount of capital um, throughout the life of this. And so you can see that after 10 years, you know, what the capital you have access to is actually a lot more than what you've put into this policy as well. Yeah, that's huge, Liz, for sure. So 10 years, you put in 2 million and you'd have access to 2.7 million. So you've, you've gained that 700,000 on your balance sheet, but you also can put that $2.7 million to use and yeah. then just grow more assets and accumulate more assets that are generating more income. That's right. And so you can see, you know, even year six, you've got access, you know, you haven't lost access to that over a million dollars um, of, you know, that you can, you can continue to use and growing other assets or use for equipment or whatever else the business owner needs. And understanding that none of this actually is talking about the death benefit. So should something happen, there's also um, a whole lot of tax free money that's going to come into the business that will solve any kind of um, problems with splitting a corporation up or continuing the corporation on or whatever needs to happen. So that's what's happening in the background. So it's important to understand. And when we talk about multitasking, it's like, this is what's happening on your balance sheet. You've got access to liquidity and you have a death benefit that's not even illustrated here that's, that's uh, available should something, something happen. So it's providing that protection for your business as well. Yes, this is the and asset. You get to do all of those things. So business owners need protection, uh, obviously, and you always are trying to manage risk as best you can. So there's these two simultaneous goals that we've been alluding to. You can optimize the value of your business today and into the future. And as Liz alluded to, you can take advantage of opportunities for growth. So when an opportunity presents itself, and it will, if you have a readily accessible pool of capital, as you know, as a business owner, opportunities will track you down. So with that pool of capital, you can take advantage. Yeah, yeah, really important. And the thing I think is, you know, understanding the um, power of control. So one thing that um, I talk to business owners a lot about with is particularly of taking advantage of opportunities is, Sometimes it's challenging to get other kinds of financing in a business because of what's been happening with your balance sheet because you've had ups and downs in terms of income, you know, receivables and <laughs> expenses and things like that. So getting, getting um, access to capital when you most need it is not always super simple in a business. So having somewhere where you um, are guaranteeing being able to take a policy loan um, such that you can use it for the opportunities that happens is just going to change what what opportunities you can make the most of and how your business grows and also controlling the terms of that loan is also really important while you're um, paying it back so that you can you know make the most of whatever's happening in your business and whatever those business ups and downs are in the cycle that you're going through you get to control the terms of that and use money in a way that's going to optimize your business and those are really really important parts in terms of managing risk across a business because if you have control 
of how the capital is moving, then you can mitigate a lot of the issues that come up around risk. So the bottom line is uh, you can create an asset. You can, you can grow an asset that is going to do multiple things for you. It's going to accomplish multiple goals uh, and, and help you to achieve the optimization of your business value and the ability for you to take advantage of opportunities. So by all means, if you are looking for more information, if you have any questions, give us a shout. Look at the link at the underneath our video here, and we'd be happy to uh, chat with you and talk about your specific situation with your specific numbers, because this is not a one size fits all. This is a strategy and we use permanent whole life insurance as the tool, but you drive the vehicle and it's all up to you. And we are here to help you and to coach you along the way.